In this tutorial, we are going to scan a document using a Raspberry Pi connected to an old flatbed scanner. All right, I have a Raspberry Pi here, and it's connected to this scanner via USB. And of course, I've also provided power just using a regular USB power adapter. To prevent this from being a big waste of time, you want to ensure that what we're about to do will actually work with your scanner. This website will let you know. So just click on Scanner Search Engine, and then type in the scanner's manufacturer here. In my case, it's Canon. And then type in the model number of the scanner. It should be written on the front or in the instruction manual. Now, if you see the status labeled as good, right here, you should be all right. As you saw earlier, I don't actually have a monitor or a keyboard connected to the Raspberry Pi, so I just control it remotely over Wi-Fi using this protocol called SSH. Now in Windows, you need to download this program called PuTTY to do this. Now Windows doesn't natively support the SSH protocol, so you need to download a program called PuTTY. So go to the website putty.org, and we are just going to download the regular putty, nothing special. Just save it somewhere and then run it. And this is PuTTY. Before using SSH or PuTTY, we need to find the Raspberry Pi's IP address. The easiest way to do this is to download this program called Fing. If you're using an iOS device, you can find it on the App Store, and it's on the Google Play Store as well if you're using Android. Alright, once you downloaded Fing, open it up, hit refresh, and you should see your Raspberry Pi's IP address listed. Back to PuTTY now. Input your Raspberry Pi's IP address. Once entered, click the Open button. Input the Raspberry Pi's username, which is just PI, press enter, and then put in the password. You won't see any letters appear as you type, but type it in anyway and then just press enter. Now you see this text that I've highlighted with my cursor? This is what we must input into our SSH terminal to install the software. So that's what we're going to do next. Now that we're back at the SSH terminal, we are going to install the software. The first line that you're going to enter is sudo su, and then press the enter key. Now type out aptitude update, and then again press the enter key. Now unfortunately, you are going to have to wait a while. While we're waiting, I should just give a heads up that uh, the next command that I type in, the word installed, should have been just install. So I will have to fix that up in a moment. Okay, it's now time to fix it up. I'm just going to re-enter that line and just delete the ed at the end of installed and it should be good. Yeah, you got to be really careful to enter everything in right or stuff messes up. Once you are sure you've inputted everything in correctly, press the enter key. When you see the do you want to continue prompt, just type in y for yes, 
and then hit the Enter key. Now we have to wait a while. Next, we need to configure the software. To do so, we need to input the following at the SSH prompt. Now, remembering that uppercase versus lowercase is important, input run equals yes, and then hit the Enter key. Next, input run as user equals sane. Now, don't forget the underscores. They are really important. After inputting all that, press the Enter key. Again, at the SSH terminal, input the text exactly as I do here, and then press the Enter key. I should mention that each time you see a space, it's only a single space, never double or triple at least for this tutorial. Now input this line. This should start up the um, same software. After you filled it all out, press the Enter key. And now you are insane. This is the scanner software. Now let's see if we are actually connected to our scanner. For this to work, your scanner has to be on. Just type out LS USB and then press Enter. And you should see the manufacturer of your scanner listed. Next, type in scan image space dash L and then hit the Enter key. Now, you should have the name of your scanner in this area. I am underlining the name of my scanner in red. And now that we have the name of our scanner, we should write that down for later use. To exit the same software, just type exit and then press enter. So now just to make things easy, I'm going to close out of here. So just click on the X in the top right hand corner. Now I'm going to start up a new SSH session, and um, so I'm going to just put the IP address for the Raspberry Pi in here. Once I got it entered in, I'll just click the uh, Open button. I would like to make the Documents folder on the Raspberry Pi accessible to the SANE software, so we're going to log back into the Pi. Now that we started a new SSH session, we're going to put the password and username back in. Hit enter after each. There we go. And now type out ls and press enter. Here you see listed the different directories that are available. I would like to save any scanned documents directly to the documents folder or directory. And, uh, you know, it just makes sense to me. So to make this work, we need to open up the Documents folder so the same software actually has access to it. To open up access to a folder, just use the chmod command, followed by triple seven, and then the name of the folder that you want to open up. In my case, it's the Documents folder I would like to open up, so as you can see, I typed out the name of the Documents folder, and then I pressed Enter. Now the Documents folder is open, for the same software to write to. For the remainder of the tutorial, I'm going to be using SSH from the Mac instead of using PuTTY in Windows. Now it's exactly the same once you're in, other than the colors. And you get the advantage of being able to copy and paste, which I haven't been able to do in Windows for some reason. Now for logging in to SSH at the Mac terminal, just type out SSH, the Pi's username, which is just Pi in this case, followed by the at symbol, and then the Pi's IP address, and then press the enter key afterwards. Okay, then I'm just going to put the uh, password in, which is just 
Raspberry. Hey, just a refresher for Windows users. At PuTTY, you just provide the IP address, and then click the Open button, provide the Pi's username and password. Alright, here's a breakdown of what we've pasted into the prompt here. The dash D represents that uh, we are using the flatbed part of the scanner, followed by the name of the scanner. Notice the single quotes are still there. And then followed by 300, which means we're using 300 dots per inch. You may need to look up in the scanner's manual what DPI values it's capable of. Uh, regular is 300 and 600 are very common as well. This number here, you take your 300 and you multiply it by the width of the page, which is 8.5 inches. All right, so that's how we got the 2550. the same thing for the Y number, but instead it's 300 multiplied by 11 inches. And last we have the path and the file name that we would like to call our scan document. Okay, I just hit the enter key and I'm now scanning. Just waiting for the scanner to do its thing. All right, I'm just making a uh, remote connection using VNC to the Raspberry Pi just to show you that the scan document is actually there. If you would like to set up your computer so you can VNC into your Raspberry Pi like I just did, I've actually put together a tutorial that uh, will show you how to do this. Best of all, there isn't a keyboard or a mouse that you need to like plug into your Pi to accomplish this. As long as you have a Mac or PC that's connected to the same network that your Pi is, you will be good to go. I placed a link down in the description below this video that provides the tutorial. To view the document, you must go to Accessories and then Image Viewer, and then open the document through here to actually view it. And here it is, the document that we had scanned earlier. Last, I wanted to say. If you want to convert this image file to a PDF and compress it as well, or if you would like to uh, transfer it from the Raspberry Pi to a PC or Mac, uh, there are some links found in the description below this video that will take you to some further instruction on how to get these things done.